Hello, hello everybody. Hello, Doddis from Mexico. Hello, hello Fizzy Patch. Hello, not Jack Howard. <laughs> hello, Scotsman. Hello, Jackie. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Amazon Music Sessions. My name's Jack Howard, the actual Jack Howard. Not Jack Howard is here. Let's not get us confused. Uh, welcome. I'm back. How good was last week's show? Right. It was fun to just sort of sit back and watch it for once. But I've got to come back and uh, and do my job this week, which is actually very exciting. I was about to make a joke about how, like, oh, got to come back and do it now. But what an amazing show we've got coming up. Um, but before I tell you about that, we're here live every Thursday from 6 p.m. on the Amazon Music UK Twitch channel and now on the Amazon Music app. So if you're out and about, there is no excuse to not be watching my face. OK, <laughs> Firm Tomato has just said, is this the guy from Tom Scott's video? <laughs> That's not untrue. Right. The wonderful show that we've got in store for you tonight, everybody, includes an absolute legend, a ledge bag. Coming up, we have Nadia Rose, who she might be Stormzy's cousin, but she's making a name for herself all in her own right. She's a South London based rapper who's been causing a scene since back in 2016, oh, <laughs> little rhyme, poet, and I didn't even realise it. She has writing credits for the powerhouse Rihanna, who continues to be one of Nadia's biggest fans. Her latest EP, First Class, came out back in August, and tonight she'll be performing tracks from that and more. And guess what? The polls are back, baby! It's been a while, but we thought, good to give you some, some, some control again. And you can trust me, that every legal vote will be counted for the polls for Nadia's performance, I, I assure you. But not only Nadia, we have a guest tonight who needs no introduction, is Smelony C. <laughs> An actual icon, a, a Spice Girl, a real life Spice Girl is gonna be here. 
Her new self-titled album came out last month and it features our first guest, Nadia Rose. How cool is that? Coincidence? No, of course, we planned this. Uh, she was obviously a member of the legendary girl band Spice Girls and sold over 85 million records worldwide. And tonight, she's going to be treating us to an uninterrupted half an hour set. So look forward to that. If you've got any questions that you want to ask, and I'm sure that you do, you can submit those in the usual place, which is the thingamajiggy over here. That's the technical term. You click on the thingamajiggy and it opens up another thingamabobby. And then you can submit your question in there. And if you see a question in there as well that you like the look of already, like, oh, I was going to ask that. You don't need to ask it again. You can just give it an upvote and I'll make sure that it gets asked later in the show. But I'm going to be quite picky with questions tonight because I'm imagining there's going to be quite a lot for some reason. So make sure you ask the best ones that you possibly can. Right. We're all clear? We know what we're doing? Okay. <laughs> in that case, I think it's time to start the show. Let's welcome to the stream our wonderful first guest. It's Nadia Rose. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. What a crazy, weird year that it's been. How have you been spending it? Oh, yeah, it has been a very crazy one. Um, do you know what I've been I've been working? Luckily enough, I can I'm a creator, so I just I just keep creating whether things are normal or different to the norm I just continue creating um so yeah that's what I've been up to since the start of March, well that's amazing what sort of uh what sort of stuff have you been creating this year and how has that differed from what you were expecting this year to be well uh I created my EP uh, as you mentioned which came out in August um and I'm now in album mode uh, which is super exciting for me. It's my debut. Um, so, yeah, and it's been a bit different just because I guess I can't go out and do all the normal collaborations kind of stuff. We had to do it remotely and, you know, it's all been a bit, yeah, it's all been very Zoom-based. Um, but, yeah, apart from that, it's been pretty much the same. Don't talk to me about Zoom. Sick of hearing about it. Um, <laughs> but did you uh, record your entire EP in lockdown? Was that a lockdown project? Um, no, do you know what? I did have some of it uh, pre-lockdown, but yeah, some of it did come during lockdown. So yeah, there was a, a fusion of creative processes for that EP. Well, I think we should get on with the show. I'm keen to hear you perform now. Uh, your first track that you're going to perform for us is called Airplane Mode. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about that before you perform it? Or do you want to get on with it and we'll yeah. talk about it afterwards? Your choice. Um, do you know what? Let's just get into it. We'll have a natter afterwards. I like that. Okay, cool. This is Airplane Mode by Nadia Rose on the Amazon Music Sessions. Enjoy. Check, check. Yeah, run me DJ. Yes. <clears throat> Obviously, I know we can't fly anywhere at the minute, but just use some cardboard boxes and create your own little airplane. Yeah, bunks Step with sauce. Came in with the entourage. Squad step in. How we looking? Swag looking marvelous. Cop police. Somebody call the ambulance. Nobody can't call me that I'm too nice. I'm a form on airplane mode. I'm in a flight mode like aviation. I go high every day. And I'm like no long conversation. I go high every day. I'm in a flight mode. I'm in a what? I'm in a mindset. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In a fly mode like aviation. Hands up. Airplane mode. Do -do 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 -do. Airplane mode, my gun. Airplane mode, my gun. No connection. No reception. I'm in a fly mode like aviation. I'm a fool in my airplane mode. TikTok, ride it good. Bust news the likelihood. You know me, I do it to them like they never thought I could But I did like I knew I would Oh jeez, looking like I won, like I won gold Boy at home, won the lottery Drinks on me, but I still slap her Get it done quick, can't be talking like you're onto me I'm OT, yo, I'm on stuff I'm too much, with my granny and my auntie Them I say I'm too enough Maybe so, 
Maybe true, that's why them stick to me mad just like crazy G. Yeah, I saw your guan. Maybe sir, had the hotline bling you from page you go, no me out of reach. Gonna be I'm a phone that on airplane mode. What? I'm in a flight mode like aviation. I go high every day. And I'm like, no long conversation. Why? Cause I go high every day. Yeah, I'm in a flight. I'm in a what? I'm in a mind. Yeah, 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 in a flight mode like aviation. Here we go, airplane mode. Airplane mode, me gone. Airplane mode, me what? No connection. I got no reception. I'm way too high, can't reach me. Yeah, no, 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 and yeah. No connection, no. No reception, I. Way too high, can't walk last time. I'm a phone that my airplane mode. I'm in a flight mode like aviation. Huh. I go high every day. And I'm like, no conversation. Why? Cause I go high every day. I'm in a flight. I'm in a what? I'm in a mind. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In a flight mode like aviation. Airplane mode. Airplane mode, look on. Airplane mode, my gun. I got no reception. I got no reception. I'm way too high, can't reach me. Come a phone, they on airplane mode. Poof. <laughs> yes, yes. That was bangers. Nadia Rose with vibes. airplane mode on the Amazon Music sessions. How did that feel to be able to perform that? Do you know what was good? It's been a minute. I've put in a bit of quarantine weight, and I've been getting, I've been sitting down a bit more than uh, I'm usually used to. Uh, so I wasn't sure if, yeah, if I'd even get through one track. So yeah, I'm very thankful for that. And um, yeah, I love that track. I love all my tracks, but yeah, great way to one start. One track down. Let's see how we go. Okay, so that one was called Airplane Mode. Uh, before we talk about that, I just want to let you know that we're going to be polling the rest of the songs that you're doing. I know that you've chosen the final song that you want to perform, but um we're going to put up the first poll now yep. to decide what the next track is that you're going to be performing. So you all get to choose. So get voting now. And like I said, every legal vote will be counted. You can trust me. So tell us a little bit <laughs> about Aeroplane Mode. What's that song about? Where did it come from? Oh, Aeroplane Mode. I mean, I do like to travel first and foremost. Uh, I want to be a pilot at some point. Everyone knows I just love planes. Um, so yeah, my fascination with airplanes is just, I guess, the first drive foremost. Um, but away from that, just sometimes, you know, when you're creating, you just don't want your mind to be infiltrated with things. And, you know, sometimes I'll be trying to write and my phone's just pinging off. Someone's ringing me. Someone's texting me. Something's happening on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Um so, yeah, I'm just like, do you know what? Airplane mode, and that's how I get things done. You do you, I'm going to do me over here, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Um, I, I just just checking my phone. I don't know what you just said. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just a silly joke for me. Just for, sometimes nice. I just make jokes <laughs> for me and that's okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the songwriting then. No, well played, um, well Both played. for yourself and for other people. Am I, am I right in thinking that you've written for Rihanna? Oh, yeah, that is, that is true news. Very true. Tell me a little bit about that then. How did, how did that relationship start? How did it develop? What happened there? I'm interested. I mean, do you know what? It was just a, it was, you know, a good summer in 2017. The sun was out um, and I was relaxing and I, I got an email uh, from, from someone at Rock Nation and I thought, well, you know, I thought it was one of those spam ones, you know, someone's just trying to pull a fast one. So I kind of ignored it, but then I thought, nah, let me actually look. So I checked out the name of the person and it turned out there was a legitimate person from, from that label. So I thought, okay. Um, and I got my friend at the time to reply, like as my manager, just, you know, trying to make it look a bit, you know, more prim. Um, and yeah, she replied and yeah, they got back and said, we would love to have you uh, on her writing camp. Uh, they gave us some dates and 
some information around it and I was just like right I'm ready to go um and yeah I just created loads of tracks uh with some super producers um and some great uh other writers um and yeah it was it was thrilling for me to know that Riri asked me personally because some of them you know came through labels and suggestions but Riri actually asked specifically for me and I was just like that's like yeah that will always spin my head to this day but yeah I mean she's great we we talk, we catch up, she checks in on me, I do the same. And yeah, and she's just, she's like as huge as she is, she's such a humble and grounded person, which is, yeah, inspiring. That's very, very cool. And it must be so, I love I love as well that you call her Riri. I love that you just, like, you're just on that term now. That's so fucking cool. But um, do you, did you, was it like really validating as well when you, when you got that call from her, when you, when you knew that she was, looking for you specifically to write some stuff? I mean, yeah, I mean, I I, I do what I do just because I, I love doing what I do. But yeah, for someone like that, I've grown up and, and listened to and appreciated, even just as a businesswoman, like, yeah, for her to even have had a glimpse and seen anything that I do and feel like she would like me to be part of what she does. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, just made me know that I was on the right tracks and yeah something that I should be doing and continue doing and when it comes to writing for you as well what what comes first is it is it uh, uh, the beat is it the melody is it a title is it a theme what comes first for you and or is it different every time yeah do you know what it definitely does vary there's sometimes like I've literally a song names come into my head and then I'm just like running with that um, and other times yeah it's been led on via the the beat how the beat has made me feel and what the beat makes me think about um and then yeah just translating that I guess um and yeah I try to just just be me I feel like at first I thought oh if I'm songwriting for somebody else I've got to try and kind of emulate their thing but I'm I'm no good at doing that I've I, I can only do me um so yeah I just just go out there do me and if the 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 artist likes that bit of me then go on and take it <laughs> <laughs> well the people have spoken and they have decided that the next track they would like to hear from you is your track higher so whenever you're ready please take it away higher very nice choice say no more let's get into higher pick up the people Oh, my, my dog has come to join me as well. Oh, so we have had a technical. We, we have had a technical. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so while uh, <laughs> Nadia is trying to figure out her technical issue, we'll be there in a second, I'm sure. Tell me where you're from, everybody. Tell me where you're watching from, because right at the start of this, we had a hello from Mexico, and I want to see where people are viewing this show from. It's always exciting to find out the different places that people are watching from. And I'll, we'll talk more about that after hire. This is Nadia Rose on the Amazon Music Sessions. Enjoy. Apologies for the difficulties there. We're back in. Ah, no, no, no. Ah, I'm your buzz, your daily fix Feel me in your veins, is the pain a bit You're an addict And be fixed a light mechanic Without it, you go sinking so I turn it. What you needed? Someone else for that ship sell Take a hit on this, inhale and exhale How that taste, baby? Like it's a don't it? Right away, then just go with the motion Yeah, go with the tide, let's coincide You and I, we for the skies Hi, baby, when you're feeling blue That's my cue, get ready, I'm a thinking You know, are you coming or going? Where do you wanna be? Where? Wherever you're coming or going. What? I just hope it's with me, baby. Oh yeah. You wanna swim in the ocean? Take a swim, baby. Catch a cloud of seas. What else? Take a ride in the hot space. Whoa. When you get high with me, baby. That's right. Ah, uh, roll me up and wrap me. I hit the spot at me. Is that good, Cali? Never really Dally. Oh, you got monkeys, huh? Got something for you, Daddy. Yeah. Something to do the trick. It's me, it's me. I'm the cure of the cause, the shoe and the source, your wildest dreams what or your curious force. Yeah. We'll go on an adventure, get high off my sweet and low, that is splendor. Go with the tide, let's coincide. You and I, we for the skies. 
Hi, baby. When you're feeling blue, that's my cue. Get ready, I'ma take you. Uh huh. Are you coming alone? Where do you wanna be? Yeah. Uh huh. Baby, you wanna swim in the ocean? Nigga, die, baby. Catch a flight over sea. Oh yeah. Take a rocket to outer space. Will you get high with me, baby? Take it to the bridge. What? You know I'll take you. Sing along, crew. What? Yeah. Oh no, this loving ain't for. One more time, are you coming up? Where do you wanna? Where you wanna? Where you Yeah, I just hope it's with me, baby. You wanna swim in the ocean? Huh? Catch a flight overseas. They go rocky to our space. Then you get high with me, baby, my baby. Cheese. I was. Yeah. Nadia Rose. Apologies. With higher, and Nadia, while we were having that technical issue, I asked people where they were watching from, um, and I know that this can't compare to performing live, but you have got an audience yeah. from <laughs> Birmingham, Germany, Chile, Australia, France, uh, Brazil, Croydon, the Netherlands, South Africa, California, Pennsylvania. There are Croydon. people from all over the place watching. This is so great. Wow. <laughs> wow. Old tight the squad worldwide. I get me. It don't just it starts in Croydon, but it don't stop in Croydon. So big love to everybody locked in. Love y'all. <laughs> Let's chuck it to the next poll. Let's find out what the next track is that you want her to perform. Remember, every legal vote will be counted. I'm gonna keep doing that joke until it's not funny to me anymore. So tell us a little bit about higher. Um, tell us about where that song came from for you and uh, a little bit about the music video that we're about to take a look at as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, higher for me, it's all about elevation in everything that, that we do. You know, we want to just keep elevating. Um, and I came out of a, a bit of a treacherous label situation, a bit, a bit, a bit of turbulence um, at, my, at my old label. So, um I felt like coming out of that and just, I felt like I elevated because I, I was free again. Um, and I was now putting out this project on my own label. Like I'm the owner, the CEO of my own label that I put this project out on. Um, so yeah, high is just a moment of just, you know what? Even though you've tried to push me down, I'm, I'm elevating. I'm gonna keep going up. You know, you get high with me, baby. That's is what it is. <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the uh, music video for Hire. There's a clip of it now. Enjoy. Ride the wave and just go with the motion. Yeah, go with the tide. Let's go inside. You and I reach for the skies. Hi, baby. When you're feeling blue, that's my cue. Get ready, I'm going to take you high. You know, are you coming or going? Where do you want to be? Where? Wherever you're coming or going. What? I just hope it's with me, baby. Oh, yeah. You want to swim in the ocean? Take a trip, baby. Catch a fly overseas. Take a flight. Take a rocket to outer space. Whoa. But you get high with me, baby. That's right. Uh, roll me up a I hit the spot at me. It's that good. Never dilly dally. There's, there's something really kind of retro feeling about that video. Am I on the right sort of track with that? Was that intentional? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a, I'm an old soul. Um, so yeah, anything retro, vintage, throwback, that's my bag. Um, so yeah, from I heard, from I heard the beat, I mean, we created it together, but from I heard those strings, you know, the guitar was going, I said, oh yeah, this is definitely a bit of me. And yeah, we just continued to build it from there. So um, shout out Third Life on the production for that one. And when it comes to making music videos for this one and for other ones that you've made as well, do you like to be involved in creating the visuals for your songs or do you like to hand that over to somebody else? And, uh, or, you know, how, how do you prefer to work? Do you know what I mean? Like when it comes to, to like visuals and like the imagery and stuff, I feel like my my brain can be a bit limited. Like I, I feel like I have to start, I can see it. But then I'm generally like, right, okay, I'm gonna connect with you 
somebody who like that's just completely their bag I'm going to connect with them and they're going to be able to kind of take my kind of media idea and just blow it up um so yeah I feel like I'm 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 good for the start but to get the full product I generally like to collaborate yeah yeah so you you like to sort of come to somebody with a starting point and say this is the kind of thing I want to do and then you try and sync up with somebody creatively who's able to make that sort of thing happen so you want somebody to facilitate something rather than to take something you've done and turn it into their own thing precisely that's you smart jack yeah you articulated that a bit better than i did <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was just making sure i understood it makes sense though i think it's i think it's important to to be able to have that, those sort of collaborations with people and be able to work with people in that way rather than you know having to uh oversee everything yourself and 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 being that sort of auteur, auteurship or you know all it isn't important all the time to make sure that you're involved with absolutely everything yeah exactly i mean you know teamwork makes the dream work someone's gonna have strengths here where someone else has weaknesses and yeah you just you just work with each other to get the the best product and that's all good all right, well, let's jump into the next track. And uh, everyone has decided they want to hear Too Bad. So whenever you're ready, take it away and let's have, uh, let's have a good time. Too Bad, good choice, good choice. Yes, big up the people, them. I'm feeling the selections. Run me, DJ. I'll title the Gemini's locked in. Horoscope honeys. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a real G. Left all my exes asking why Hot and cold such a Gemini But look close and you'll see the Gemini Yeah, I'm a real G Left all my exes asking why Hot and cold such a Gemini But look close and you'll see the Gemini Hi, all about the Benjamins that money on you Know just where I be, I got that honey for you I'm destiny, try to keep on bugging me, boo They watching me, I'm watching you Don't know you hear it over and over, they out of the loop Up out of the group, let me grind like the back of your teeth Drop up a, get my, we go low, make me go low, 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 low. Yeah, yeah. yeah. happy sometimes I'm sorry, can't handle me if you pass. Why? Just keep it too bad. I get crazy, I'm too insane. Wow, but I can be tame. Can't handle me as a game. Why? Go in the sack, they ain't afraid to pull my hair and do the rest of that. Mighty never like, batty your massive attack. Heart big too, yeah. good food like big too. Mm. They said it fine, but it wasn't fine. Such a Gemini. Be between the lines and you'll see the Gemini. Come on. Look between my thighs and you'll see the ha ha ha. Hotter than Jamaica, then I'm called like Canada. Yeah. See, this a different caliber. Yes. New change like this on the calendar. I mean, he couldn't do it, she couldn't do it. Here come my new itch challenger. Before we do the do, I wanna see just how you do. I'm tempted and terrible. Ooh, heart black and it's red, that's who woo. Then we bang, give me pew pew, make me go. That was Nadia Rose with Too Bad off her second EP, First Class, which came out in August. How has the reception been since the release? Oh, do you know what? It's been nothing but love. People have been enjoying the music. Uh, they've been sharing the music. Um, and yeah, some people are just literally just like, they just are thrilled that I've put out some music because, you know, in my old situation, I got a bit... But, you know, couldn't put out some music for some time and whatever was going on. So, yeah, just literally people being able to hear some music from me and, you know, being able to see how I've developed as an artist. Um, 
yeah, I think people have really, really taken well to it. So I'm chuffed. But like I said, it's album mode. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep elevating. As I said, that's the program. How do you how do you feel yourself as well? Like in terms of like going from the EP to the second EP, and now, like you say, you're in album mode. Do you feel like you're changing and developing? Do you can you tell the significant differences between one and the other? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I'm I'm getting into my my late twenties now. <laughs> So yeah, I'm definitely not as young as I used oh, yeah. to be and there's some experiences that I've I've had in the last, you know, you know, two, three years that I didn't have at the time of putting out my first EP. Um and there's even experiences that I've had since finishing my last EP that I hadn't had before that are now um yeah, being implemented in my album. So yeah, it's just further about growth for me and I, I love it. I'm I'm a flower. I love to grow, you know. That's it. <laughs> I like it. And do you find that your personal experiences are essential uh, essential to be putting into your into your music and into your lyrics? Is that a big part of how you write your music? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because there's like there's a trillion and one of us like doing music. Um so if you know, if your story is the same as someone else's, you're not really going to be unique and you're going to just kind of get, you know, like crabs in a bucket or whatever. It's all going to be the same. If I tell you my story, as much as someone can relate, it's still only going to be my story. So I'll always be unique in that sense. So, yeah, I'm I'm just always going to tell you what it is, what is happening with me, whether it's good, bad, happy, sad. Um, yeah, I'm going to share with people. And are there any songs that you've written that you find change meaning for you as you get older and as they mature? Or, or d does that not really happen? Do they end up just representing that moment in time and what you were going through at that time when you wrote that song? Um, no, do you know what? There's there's some material that um, that is probably going to go on my album that I actually wrote like quite a while ago. Um and what it meant then versus what it means now are just is really different. Um, so yeah, I feel like sometimes I, you know, you create stuff that it for that moment it makes sense, but really you then find out that that wasn't actually the moment for it. Uh, you know, it it has more meaning to you now, or sometimes it might work the other way around. Um, but yeah, for me, it's definitely been a thing where I've been able to see that yeah, things are definitely things are feeling cohesive uh, and making a lot more sense for me now um, as I've gotten older and yeah, just grown and experienced more things. And are there any songs on this EP that you're especially like eager to play in real life when that's allowed again? Oh, do you know what? The whole thing, I know that I know that doesn't really answer the question. But yeah, the whole thing, honestly, I, I can't choose. I, I, yeah, I can't put it down to one. Just the whole thing, get me outside again so I can run up and down the stage. I feel restricted here. You know, I want to go to the left, but I'm going to be off the camera. I want a cartwheel to the right and I'm off the camera. Like, do you know, I'm loving this though. Side note, I'm loving this. But yeah, <laughs> um, I definitely do miss that about um, the stage and... Yeah, I can't wait to just go and you know perform all my tracks. I I think that the silver lining on all of this is that when you play that new music, everyone will know the words, and so there won't be that awkward thing where people are like, "Oh, this is the new one. I don't quite know yet." Everyone will be on board. Uh, and just to transition into the next song now, Definitely. people want to hear "Squad." So whenever you're ready, take it away. Ooh. Squad, an absolute classic. Do you know what, DJ? Let's go straight into that. Of my old tracks, this is definitely you know, an all-time favourite for myself. And um, I can't wait to be back with my squad and we're not doing two metres between us and stuff. But yeah, until then, pick up the live crew. What? Get Sue's back. But you never left. Yes, I did a rose from the dead. And now I'm here to kill them with flows and some punchlines that'll go over your head. Turn back, I'm a caution ahead. I'm your worst nightmare stood over your bed. Uh, 
So them girl try cool me, but I smell defeat like a hole in your grass. Wow, she's sick and she's bad. She sings and she raps, she and she's wag. They too cool that chat, but when they see me, don't speak none of that. Cause nobody bad like me I'm getting higher than a block of flats in Battersea Whoa And I'm with my team, Squale Where you at my jeans? I'm only 10 yell up on that squad That's what? That's squad I'm only 10 yell up on that squad That's what? That's squad Yeah, I'm only 10 yell up on that squad Messing with my squad? I think not Me and my, we roll deep And we always got green So we're pretty much peas in a bud I was at the scene, had to flee from the cops I go inside with no keys for the locks Um, excuse me madam, how did you get on the premises? Well, I came to kill off my nemesis So I used my juju when I came up in the They say that about I'm from where the So if they get me mad, we're in the yard disturbing residents Then we leave out the yard, hoping the car dispose of Cause, nobody bad like us but really, we don't want no fuck. Come on, roll them so we can turn this up. Squale, let me see your hands all shut and I'm rolling 10 yell up on that squad. That's what? That's squad. I'm rolling 10 yell up on that squad. That's what? That's squad. Yeah, I'm rolling 10 yell up on that squad. He came chew with the, came chew with the. I came with Mary Jane's, I came in it with Molly. Enough girl in it, that's the way you roll, squaddy. Enough girl in it, that's the way you roll out. If the light is good, you have to get your phone out. Fair skin teeth when we pose for the photos. Some girl are braided, some girl are in cornrows. But still, one's red if we have to. The heart is still like a statue. Been on my ground like my back tooth, yeah. Take out the time, but I fat wall. Step on it, set the back rules. Why? Cause if my need me there, well, I'm coming. And if I ain't got the wit, then I'm running. I do a format in the squad, eh? Let me see your hands all shut and I'm rolling. That's what? That's squad. I'm rolling. Yeah, I'm rolling ten yell up on that squad. That's what? That's squad. I'm rolling ten yell up on that squad. That's what? That's squad. Say it with me, Sandy Squad, 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 Squad. I can't hear you, Squad, Squad, a Squad, Squad. I'm rolling ten yell up on that squad. That's what? That's Squaddy. Yeah, that's the clan. That's the posse. That's them, and that's more. Big up yourself, Sensei. I didn't tell you he was featured on that, sorry. There's a dog. There's a dog. <laughs> I'd like to know more about the dog, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know what? That's my beautiful, beautiful Sensei. He was like sleeping on my feet while I was performing. So I said, do you know what? You obviously want to get involved. So. <laughs> wow. <Well>, he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some fan questions now. We can't spend too much time on the dog, which Thank is a you. shame because I'd like to just I'd like to interview the dog. Um, okay, we've got uh, a question from Instagram first from know, right? uh, Jonah uh, underscore X twenty one, who said, uh, "What artists have influenced you?" Oh, do you know what? Um, it's been a ton of artists that have influenced me. Um, I mean. Not just because she's coming on after, but Spice Girls are uh, just a huge inspo for me. Just seeing women, I mean, that's been my biggest thing from I was a child. Just seeing women like dominate their space within, as we know, this very male dominated scene. Um, it's always been inspiring to me. Spice Girls through to uh, Leah, Missy Elliott, Little Kim, throwback to Roxanne Shante. Um, yeah, I've just all been about just. Seeing women just killing it. Um, so, yeah, there are a few names. Just a very few names. Well, coincidentally, somebody has asked if you could feature on a classic Spice Girls song, which one would it be? Oh, now wait a second. Pressure. Featuring on a Spice Girls song... I know, innit? Do you know what? I might have to go with Holla. Holla. It's a good Produced choice. Produced by Dark Child. Absolutely love that track. I wanna make you holla. Give you my name. Give you Big tune. Yeah, that's me. That's me all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, as well, like, um, somebody has also said uh, their name is Stud. St 
I'm just going to go with stud for now. They've said, can you ask Nadia if she'll be supporting or appearing on the Melanie C tour? I think she would be great. Oh, well, it's funny you say that. 2021 may just bring that. Don't know how much I can say. So, oh. yeah, may just bring that. <laughs> Who knows? Who can say? Well, that's all we've got. Um, okay, last question that we will ask. Um, Hooked on Spice says, ask Nadia when she put her phone on airplane mode last. I miss traveling. <laughs> Do you know what? Funnily enough, my phone is on airplane mode right now for this. Um, <laughs> so I don't get any interruptions. But yeah, in terms of being on a plane, um, the last time was in August. So it wasn't too long ago, but also too long ago. So yeah, hopefully we can all get back out there and just catch a bit of sun and good vibes, you know? Well, Nadia, this has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to have you play us out with your final track, Backseat. Uh, but if you want to say anything to everyone who's watching before you do that, please, you know, do it now. The floor is yours. Yes. Well, I just want to obviously say thank you to everyone that's locked in. Um, I can't wait till, you know, I can actually see some faces and I'm not just looking down this lens it does feel very strange but I can also feel you guys does that make sense so yeah thank you for pulling up whether in your living room your bedroom your outside for whatever reason um just yeah thank you for locking in um shout out my mum always my dad my little brother Cash I see you baby um but yeah just gonna get into the last track and I brought a special guest very special guest with me um her name is Tai Chi Rose for those who don't know, an absolute like star. Um, and you're gonna be seeing so much more from her because she will be signed to Quirky Entertainment, my label. Um, and yeah, she's just absolutely killing it right now. So uh, yeah, Ty, come through my baby. Come on, step into the light. Good evening. Oh. Hello. <laughs> oh. Hi. Yes, Ty Chi Rose, and this is Backseat, produced by myself. Run us, DJ. Oh, I drop Amazon music on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, get me. And then you hit them with the you, you. Tell them, Ty. What? Mm -hmm. One foot on the accelerator. Yeah. Uh -huh. Next foot on the clutch. Yeah. Your face in my garage. Oh en route to my love, no diversions. Uh -huh. You're perfect. Yeah. It's a red light, but we keep on going. Okay. Or oh, was it amber? Look, I don't be knowing. Be Roads are dry, but inside it's snowing. Yeah, yeah. Cruise control, I'm about to bust me in the ocean. Mm. Squirt, squirt, and skirt, skirt, the night rider. 120 MPH, 69 on the play. Stay yeah, head of the game, getting hit in the range. Come in the game, baby, slam on the brakes. Different to these average. When we exit, oh, I know you know they ain't no average kisses. Damage the sitting, I got the works, and you come back for the business. Oh, yeah. I love the way you get nasty, but then take ask me, besties. Text me if I mess up your backseat. Bing, buddy, bing, bing, bing. And I love the way you get nasty, but then take ask me, besties. Text me if I mess up your backseat. A bing buddy bing. Tell them sis. Number one panya charter taxi. Carry you come on me yard. Yeah, yeah boss. Bus. Bus, hotel glory on the round the corner. What? So we can't go on back. If we wanna. Mark X still I keep the Benz wheel with interior clean the windshield. Yeah, ready, ready for your late night ride. What? And I ain't never ask you twice. Stop it coming and come. Come. Feel me give you the tune tune. Tune. Hit the lamity don't go. Hit them with the doom, go the boom, 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 bing. And I just wanna wanna put to us. That gear stick did off a shoe. No, she panty powered. Goody, I go on good. What? And you know me not. Tell us that. Messy, but auntie, ask me. Text me if I mess up your messy. I bing, 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 bing. And 
And I love it when you get messy Ask me, text me if I mess up your taxi I think Billy uh -huh, I love it when you say take off your fancy gladly Can't leave the backseat in ruins And I love it when you say take off your fancy them long gone Proceed to give me long time The journey goes on and on Oh, hey, yo, ask me, Benzie, text me if I mess up your backseat. Tell them, Ty. Oh, I love it when you mess you. Oh, you mess me, text me if I mess up your backseat. A bing, bitty, bing. Uh-huh, and then you. And then you. And then you. Hey, yeah, let me give me, give me. Hey. Amazon, go shit me for me. Hey, 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 give it to them. Hey, hey, take it to them. What? A bing, bitty, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> yes, go and big up yourself, oh, sissy. Good. Yes. Thank you, Amazon. Kaiji Rose. A pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I've been Nardi Rose. And also, shout out Sensei for coming. That was the amazing Nadia Rose. Make sure you go follow her over on Amazon Music. Now, if you've just joined us, hello, my name's Jack Howard, and this is the Amazon Music Sessions live on Twitch. We're here every Thursday from 6 p.m. on the Amazon Music UK Twitch channel, so give us a follow if you haven't already. But if you're out and about as well, you can always watch us on the Amazon Music app. Now, before we get on to Melanie C, and I don't want to take too much of your time, but a couple of months ago, a band called Glass Caves headlined this show, and after that show, I snuck into their DMs and was like, if you're ever looking for a director to you know, make music videos, I'm available. Uh, I wasn't expecting much to come of it, but it did. And about a week or so later, the lead singer, Matt, said, yeah, we've gotten this new single if you want to do it. Yes, I do. So I'm going to show it to you now as a celebration of the fact that it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this show. So uh, I'm going to let the guys introduce it. And I definitely didn't tell them to compliment me. Enjoy. All right, everyone, we're Matt and Elliot from Glass Caves. Hey. Uh, and we just want to say Jack Howard is the best. What a man. What a man. He directed our latest music video for Who Are You, the track's called. The last single from our EP, A Spin Around the Sun, which were released on Friday. Go buy it, go stream it. It is the best EP ever released, I think. Uh, and that's pretty much it from us. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good one. Boom.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I feel quite nervous about the fact that we just showed that on this show. Thank you so much for indulging me. Uh, shout out, obviously, to Mike and Jacob, who are my <laughs> housemates who are identical twins. And I know that me living with identical twins just sounds like a sitcom, but I promise it's just my life. Thank you so much for learning that dance. Thank you to David Kirkbride for being in it. Thank you so much for watching it. I won't take any more of your time. Let's get on with it now, right, everybody? Let's, let's see who we came here to see. It's an actual Spice Girl, an actual icon. Melanie C, who managed to find some time in her very busy schedule this week to record as a full, exclusive, uninterrupted set. So sit back, relax, and I can't believe I'm about to say this. Enjoy the wonderful sounds of Melanie C on the Amazon Music Sessions. Take it away. Hi, I'm Melanie C. Welcome to my Amazon Music Session. I've decided to do something a little bit stripped back tonight with my lovely musicians, wherever they are out there. And I'm going to be doing some new stuff for my new album, which is out right now, and some of my older hits. So I hope you enjoy. First one up, who I am. Building my armor so I could fit in to avoid any drama. I would shut my mouth. I hear I was lost in the ruins of who I thought I should be. I forgot I was human. I must set my body free. They don't recognize when I'm being honest Cause I wasn't the fool No, they may not like it, but I'm not sorry That's who I am, no, I've got nothing left to hide, hide. I'm comfortable with what's inside That's who I am You think you know me all this time Like what I see There's been so many changes I accept they're a part of me They don't recognize when I'm being honest Because I wasn't before No, they may not like it But I'm not sorry That's who I am No, I've got nothing left to hide Comfortable with what's inside. That's who I am. You think you know me all this time, time. But the real me is mine. That's mine. who I am. one down I hope you've enjoyed that it's so nice to sing it in a different kind of vibe to the original right I think I'm gonna have a little drink cheers I hope you're drinking something a bit better than water at home mm. okay so I'm gonna do my 
First UK number one was an incredible song with a great artist. I was lucky enough to collaborate with Lisa Lefter Lopez from TLC. This is never the same again. Something that I might regret Come on, come on Nothing ventured, nothing in. You are the one A lonely heart that can't be too Come on, come on I'm hoping that you feel the same This is something that I can't forget just be friends things will never be the same again it's just the beginning it's not the end things will never be the same again it's not a secret anymore now we've opened up the door starting to night and from now on we'll never never be the same again oh we'll never be the same again I need you so much more And I don't care what everyone will say It's about you and me And we'll never be the same again I thought that we were just oh, be yeah. friends Things will, will never be the same, same again It's just the beginning, it's not the We've end. only just Things begun be friends things will never be the same again it's just the beginning it's not the end things will never be the same again it's not a secret I love that. I've been able to sing that song in so many different ways and it just still feels so fresh. I love that. It's such an important song to me and um, always get such a great reaction when I perform it live. So I hope you like that version. Now I'm looking down because my set list is here. Um, I am missing playing live to people in venues so, so much. I think, you know, artists are missing playing as much as fans are, are missing being out there seeing their favourite artists. So, yeah, it's tough, tough times, but thank goodness for things like this. Thank you, Amazon, giving us an opportunity to perform for you guys, entertain you guys and stay connected. So, um, woohoo! you got to grab onto the good stuff. The next one is um, another new song. This is also from... Uh, my album and I've had so much fun with this record 
I have recorded four videos, um, two of which I was lucky enough to get in the bag before the first lockdown here in the UK. This was the second of those. This is seeing me as a bit of a street fighter, getting my Katrina high kick back on. If any of you are Spice Girls fans out there, you might remember Savey there. And um, this is a great song. I did this with Bill and Ted and Neve, great songwriters and producers. This is Blame It On Me. down my cheeks I'm lagging here in disbelief Blind up me so easily Messing with my energy Don't really know just how to feel Like I loved you that wasn't real We went from friends to enemies Haunted by the memories Turns out you were the poison Said I'm hearing voices Said it's paranoia Now I know you're poison Can you hear the voices Filled with paranoia Why don't you just blame it on me again Why do we put your sound asleep again If it works for you then I'll take the heat again out of people you can call your friend So why don't you just blame it on me oh, 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 oh. Why don't you just blame it on me oh, 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 oh. Why don't you just blame it on me Now it is so clear to see your dark and twisted fantasies Only like me when I'm weak Trying to be my remedy Turns out you were the poison Said I'm hearing voices Said it's paranoia Now I know you're poison Can you hear the voices Filled with paranoia Why don't you just blame it on me again? But just sound asleep again If it works for you then I'll take the heat again Running out of people you can call your friend So why don't you just blame it on me? Oh, 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 oh. Why don't you just blame it on me? For you, then I'll take the heat again. Running out of people you can call your friend. So why don't you just blame it on me? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, why don't you just blame it on me? Oh, 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 oh. Why don't you just blame it on me? Love singing that song. Um, so earlier this evening, you saw an incredible artist who I have been very lucky to spend some time with, hang out with and collaborate with. I would like to introduce the wonderful Nadia Rose back and we're going to do our little song that we wrote together. We shot a great video together and we also performed this on a live stream that I did to get the album out there. So Nadia, come on back and let's do Fearless Girl. That you could see you like I do Comparisons you make are never true It's time for you to step up to the fight You'll never really know if you don't try I could feel the power Rising up inside you And I bring the wave Hold on tight with all your might Enjoy the ride you know you got it, so don't give up 
You're stronger than you'll ever know. Learn to be fearless. Take a dive into the deepest. Oh, ain't no better time than now. Ain't no other way to wear your crown. Learn to be fearless. Take a dive into the deepest. Oh, ain't no better time than now. Ain't no other way to wear uh, your crown. Come take a dive. You feel alive, don't ya? It ain't a crime to be feeling yourself No better time to excel No better moment to rule your world Come take a dive, won't ya? You feel alive, don't ya? Uh-huh, huh, huh, huh Rate the cycle and the mode Truth be told, the road is cold Grab your coat and let's go, go, go And I'll bring the way Hold on tight with all your might and don't lose sight. Enjoy the ride. Going all the way. You know you got it, so don't give up. You're stronger than you'll ever know. Learn to be fearless. Take a dive into the deepest. Oh, ain't no better time than now. Ain't no other way to wear your crown. Learn to be fearless. Take a dive into the deepest. Oh, ain't no better time than now Ain't no other way to wear your crown Ooh, when you feel like giving up And you don't feel good enough You gotta believe in yourself Brush it off and carry on You're as good as anyone You better believe it you better believe it You better, you better Learn to be fearless Wear your crown, baby Take a dive into the deepest Take a oh, dive Oh, ain't no better time than now Oh, oh, oh Ain't no other way to wear your crown yeah. Learn to be fearless Fearless, huh. Take a dive into the deepest Take a dive Oh, ain't no better time than now Right now Ain't no other way to wear Dive, take a dive and then you All the way, baby Hey do 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 Uh, 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 uh Yeah, 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 yeah Uh, 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 uh Yeah, 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 yeah Ha, huh. na, na, na Thank you, thank you, Nadia. Oh, I can't wait till we can actually do that on a stage in front of people. Hopefully some festivals. That would be nice too. Um, oh, so nice. I do love a collab. And I also love being part of a group. So uh, if you are a fan of the Spice Girls, I think you're going to like this next one. I tend to do Spice Girls songs and um, there are so many great ones to choose, but for tonight, I wanted to do one of my personal favorites, and this is quite a different take on it. I hope you like it. Love is blind. As far as the eye can see Deep of meaningless words to me He's a lover, I need a friend Road to nowhere, twists and turns But will this never end? My dear, you know that he pleases me but your term solution ain't no resolution There ain't no release for me But something's coming over me To make me wonder Too much of nothing is just as tough I need to know the way to feel To keep me satisfied 
wrap yourself from around my finger Hold me too tight or left to linger Something fine built to last Slipped up there, I guess we're running out of time too fast My dear, you know that he's too Complication, there's no explanation, it's just a groove in me. But something's coming over me to make me wonder. Too much of nothing is just as tough. I need to know. Makes me emotional. It makes me think of the stadiums we did in 2019. Oh my God, they were amazing. Um, I look forward to hopefully doing some more stuff like that in the future. Um, I think this is a good opportunity to thank my amazing musicians. We've all had to be so creative, haven't we, in this time, finding out new ways to do everything. So thank you to them for, for their patience and sticking with me in the tough times and for the beautiful BVs as well. They're doing a gorgeous job. Um, Okay, so we've got a couple of songs left. I think we should do another newie. This is a video, actually, I shot in like the pandemic in this time. We were so lucky. We had an opportunity to work at Beautiful Theatre in London at Alexandra Palace. And it's a really fun video, really suits the song. It's a great pop record, dancey pop record about going out, about having fun. Oh my God, can't wait so we can do that again. But I had the opportunity to relive that on this video. And um, this is my little stripped down version of In and Out of Love. I'm ready, let's hit the town I can feel it now Pushing away the doubt And it's got me going Lights are glowing Pulling me through the crowd Lost in the music We're dancing like no one's here You pull me near I go in and out of love Never get enough I keep going in and out of love Trying to get higher In and out of love Never giving up So I keep going in and out of love Chasing desire Play it cool Who am I trying to fool? I'm not going home without you, without you, without you. Lost in the music, we're dancing like no one's here. I feel the heat of your skin as you pull me near. I go in and out of love, never get enough. I keep 
going in and out of love, trying to get higher. In and out of love, never giving up. So I keep going in and out of love, chasing desire. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. It's so nice to sing songs. Um, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I obviously am. A little drink. Now, I have a bit of a tradition. Anyone who's been to see my shows, it's very difficult for me to finish a show on any song other than the one I'm going to finish on tonight. This was my second UK number one. It was a massive hit after a remix by Hex Hector. And um, although we're going to do it a bit more chill tonight, it always goes off. So um, can you guess what it is yet? When the world is darker than I can understand when nothing turns out the way I planned When the sky turns grey and there's no end in sight When I can't sleep through the long night I turn to you like a flower leaning toward the sun I turn to you I direct with anxiety 
good so good the chat is absolutely kicking off make sure that you get your questions in we've got so many already in the chat or we have a little thing in my bobby here on the screen that if you click it you can submit questions the official way uh, but let's not delay any longer let's welcome the amazing melanie c to the amazon music sessions hello how are you Hi. i'm all right so thinking my bobby is that the technical term <laughs> that is a technical term, uh, absolutely a technical term. Uh, I also sometimes call it a thingamajiggy. It, it, you know, it goes between the two. How are you doing? How was it putting together something like that rather than doing it in a live space? It's kind of the kind of best case scenario at the moment. You know, it's wonderful to perform and it's great to know that you're entertaining people. But I think like Nadia said earlier, just miss people, you know, just miss being in a room with people, seeing those faces, sharing that experience. So, um, so thank you so much to Amazon Music for this opportunity, but really looking forward to getting back into rooms with people. Yeah, there's an energy that just is missing when you're doing it in this way. But I think it was amazing how you managed to do that. It's such a creative way of doing something live. For some reason, Siri is talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Siri, go away. Get lost, Siri. Okay, sorry. It's like I'm oh, my mum on Oh, man, the that's embarrassing. <laughs> so, sorry, Jack, what was your question again? I basically, I, I'm, I'm going to move on now and talk about your new album, uh, which is a self-titled album, and it's your eighth album as well. So I'm wondering what it was about this album that you were like, no, I've got to call this one me it's got to have my name do you know it's it's so strange isn't it there's been times in my career when i've considered it but it's never been quite right and this album for me feels very much like a new chapter and i think a lot of the things i wanted to express really felt like it had to be self-titled it just felt so appropriate a lot of the lyrics are about self-acceptance and finally feeling comfortable in my own skin and the time just felt right so yeah eight albums in got there in the end <laughs> and and you, you were mentioning a few of the sort of things that you're exploring in the songs there like feeling okay in your own skin and all the rest is that something that you've struggled with for a while that that idea it, it doesn't seem like you know, you have, which is a very strange thing for me to, to you know, to assume about you, obviously, because you don't know each other. But what I mean is that you've always seemed like you've oozed confidence. Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting, isn't it? I think we all go through these phases in our lives and it's just not to want to be cliched, but it's a journey, you know, and the beginning of my career was such a ridiculous one, ridiculously incredible. And um, being a Spice Girl was all of my wildest dreams coming true, but your world is turned upside down. And I think you can get a little bit lost in that. And I think my first album, Northern Star, was such a great opportunity for me to express myself as an individual. It felt very liberating. But then I think I was also quite concerned with being something other than Sporty Spice. And within trying to be other things, I maybe at times lost who I really was. So it's just nice to re-embrace that and kind of celebrate all aspects of me. 
I was going to ask you something about this as well, because I was going to say that in terms of creativity, you don't get much bigger than Spice Girls. I don't know if there is anything bigger than Spice Girls. So starting at those heights, it must be very intimidating to approach new stuff. But I imagine now, having made your peace with it, it's a very like relieving thing to go, I can just play in this space and I don't have to be concerned about reaching those heights again, because this, I mean, it's, it's incomparable. Incom you know, you can't compare to that. Do you know what? You're so right. It's like you would be foolish to think you could ever do anything, even at the, the same level of the Spice Girls, never mind beyond that. And I think going out on your own as a solo artist, it is hard. And I think especially as an artist who has been lucky enough to experience huge success, you, you have such a high bar set, you can't help but compare and it takes a long time to readjust to that and all of these years down the line and having the opportunity to be back on stage with the girls last year it really has been the time for me to be really really proud and know I can inhabit both spaces sometimes at the same time you know there's there's space to be a Spice Girl and a solo artist and I'm so lucky that I can do both. Does it feel now like the Spice Girls part of your career is something like, it's like a, a hat you can put on now, but it doesn't feel like something you have to embody at all times. The funny thing is I kind of do embody it at all times. I've literally, after last year, I'm like, I'm so proud. I think because those audiences were so amazing and we just really realized, I think for the first time, how incredible our fans are, how they've turned into these incredible grown-ups. You know, we've known them since they were dinky <laughs> and it just made us feel really proud of ourselves. And so I wake up every day going, I'm a Spice Girl. <laughs> I live it. <laughs> it's like being a superhero. We've had, honestly, we've had so much love pouring in on this show. Like it's, you know, completely different to any other one we've done before. You're right that the, the love that your fans and the support that your fans show is, it's insane. It's so good. It is. It's amazing. It's like, I feel like there's this massive support network all around the world. Sometimes I don't get to go to certain countries for like over a decade. And when I go back, I'm greeted at airports, at hotels, at TV stations, and I see these faces that I may not have seen for over 10 years, but I'm like, I know that person. And I think this year, it's been so important to feel that connection to people because we're so isolated. And it's been amazing doing things like this, having opportunities to stay connected to the fans across the globe has just made me feel like I'm not alone, you know? And I, and I think the, the fans feel that too. So it's just, it's such a two-way street. I think we're so important for each other. You're totally right. There's uh, somebody who's watching called Sporty for Life, which is already an excellent username. They've said, Melanie's new album has brought joy into so many lives and lifted up so many spirits, including mine. Her music and support has motivated me to focus more on my own health and happiness. What has brought joy into your life or has motivated you during, your, during this stressful time? Um, yeah, that's from Sporty for Life. Yes. I know her well. She's wonderful. Um, hi. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, the fans, absolutely. I did some like live Q&As at the beginning of the first UK lockdown. And I've always had this kind of like weird relationship with social media and, and never known exactly how comfortable I feel about showing certain aspects of my personal life. But when we went into lockdown, I just really felt compelled to maybe show a little bit more of myself, to share a little bit more. And I was really taken aback by how much I got from it, you know, how helpful it was to me, because I think this year has been so challenging for everybody's mental health. And, you know, I know everyone watching out there probably knows that I've spoken about that quite candidly. It is something that I have suffered with and I do suffer with from time to time. This year has been a nightmare. And um, yeah, I've had to like literally really think about self-care and um, being kind to myself and the fans have really helped me. And this album has really helped me because it's given me a focus. It's given me um, 
well, it's given me that much time to have on my hands to worry about things because I've been so, so busy, but I just feel really grateful for both of those things. It is, isn't it? This year, I think collectively, everyone's, it's quite comforting to know that everyone's in the same boat and we're all trying to take care of each other and take care of ourselves and focus in on, on self-care. And it's quite nice that this year has allowed us to take a breath to realise that that's something that we all are doing. There's none of that comparing things to each other. No one's going, oh, that person's off doing that thing and doing that thing. Everyone's in the same boat, which is actually, I don't know, there's something quite comforting about that in a weird way. Apart from the Kardashians on an island. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it is. I think it makes us realise that we're human and no matter what our differences are, I think we kind of, we often give too much energy to the differences that we have when really there are so many more similarities as human beings that we share. And I think that this year has allowed us to do that. And it has allowed us to slow down, get off that treadmill and just be more aware of what's going on for the people. So I think that's one of the positives. So let's talk a little bit more about how your songwriting has changed over the years. Um, did you approach this? Because we've already talked about how you were like, this is the one that I'm going to self-title. But was there, was there anything about the approach to the album at the beginning that you were like, I'm going to do this differently? Or was there any difference in how you're writing songs or the type of songs that you wanted to write? Yeah, th there's quite a lot of differences, actually. I worked with a whole new team, um, both behind the scenes and creatively. I have new a &R, Frank Tope, who is amazing. He introduced me to lots of new songwriters, producers, remixers, artists, like the lovely Nadia. Um, so, so that was new, that felt new and fresh and exciting. And I've been DJing for a couple of years and that has really just reminded me how much I love dance music. I've been loving all of the dance influence in pop music, whether it be EDM, some 90s, even some rave sounds in there, um, and disco. Um, I've been loving a bit of disco in, in, um, in modern music as well. So it was nice to just kind of cultivate this, this brand new sound that I, I really wanted to make people want to dance, but I also wanted to be able to allow them to sit and listen if they wanted to as well, because lyrics are really important to me because as a, a writer, as a songwriter, I'm driven by my experiences and emotions. And I feel that people really, um, really identify with that as well. So it was important to get that mix right. And is there a style that you've cultivated in songwriting over the years? Is there something that you need to start with? Is there like a, a title or a theme or a beat? Is there anything that inspires you at the start of writing songs? Do you know what's funny? There's one thing I, I think I have, the only song I can think of that started with the title is Fearless. Um, right. Well, it kind of, well, it started with an idea because Nadia and I were talking about being women in the music industry and like some of the petrifying situations you find yourself in, whether it's like going out to thousands of people on stage performing live or just like rocking up to somebody's house to go and do a, a writing session in their basement. You know, you just like, you'd have to really be so courageous at times. And we thought it was just such a beautiful thing to try and encourage people to do what we've done to try and achieve our dreams. And that's how Fearless was born. But I like, I really love working in lots of different ways. I love collaborating. I don't think, um, there are not many songs that I've kind of written alone. Uh, mostly they have been a collaborative process. And it can start with a beat, it can start with a few chords, it can start with a lyrical idea. It often starts with a really good bitching session. <laughs> I find that's where a lot of good songs come from. I think the idea of going to someone's house and doing a songwriting session in their basement is a good idea for a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And this is the thing, right, about being a female working in music. I have worked as, again, Nadia said earlier, it's, it's a very male dominated industry. There are so many more opportunities for women, but you know, this is, it's a slow process. It's been a certain way for a long, long time. And I've worked predominantly with dudes and I, I'm cool with that. I grew up with loads of brothers. I'm, you know, most of my friends, my best friends are guys, but um, you can turn up to 
a man's house, a complete stranger, as a young woman, and you are shown down to his basement. <laughs> and you just think, there's something about this that isn't quite right. <laughs> <laughs> So your track Fearless, though, with Nadia Rose, you mentioned in the uh, in the performance how much you enjoyed the music video for that. Did that get recorded pre-lockdown? Oh, the video was, um, oh my gosh, we were able to shoot Fearless. It was, oh my God, that was the video that we shot it and it and it dropped about a week and a half after we shot it it was amazing i've never had such a quick turnaround on a video that's something else about this time in music and the way we're consuming music and releasing music which is so exciting everything feels really fresh and we were when did we shoot it god i don't even know what day it is but um it was kind of when we were in between lockdowns when things were a bit more eased and it was outside so we were cool we were in our little bubble but um it was an amazing day we were due to shoot on a friday and the weather was shocking but for some reason we couldn't do the friday we ended up doing the saturday and anyone who's seen the video you can see it's beautiful we're up in northamptonshire somewhere but it looks like we're in california it's amazing well let's take a little look at that now this is a clip from the Music video for Fearless featuring Nadia Rose on the Amazon Music Sessions. Enjoy. So I assumed that you shot that in California and you just said you shot it where? <laughs> we shot it in Northamptonshire. <laughs> it was a, a, it's a track. It's a, nice. like a, um, you can go and have like track days there and stuff. It's like just this amazing facility. Siri's off again. Get lost, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I must yeah, be saying like something the, uh... that sounds like that. <sighs> Go on. Yeah, I, I think we should try and avoid any any S base words um, like Spice yeah. Girl. <laughs> we should we should, <laughs> we should avoid that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I liked all the little touches actually, like the little Spice Girls figures on the dashboard. Is that are those your ideas? Yeah. Like to sort of sneak that sort of stuff in. Do you know what? I've been working with an incredible stylist called Graham Cruz and he's actually directed two of my videos, In and Out of Love and Fearless. And with my styling as well, we've, we've really wanted to embrace and give a nod to the Spice Girls. So we're always trying to come up with fun ways to kind of get it in there. Even on Blame It On Me, we put like lots of um, little like stuff in little lyrics and song titles and things i think it's just really fun for the fans to kind of see those those little touches totally and i think that, i mean obviously the spice girls have had some of the most iconic videos ever so how do how do you feel about making music videos now do you have a lot of say in in the visual style of what you want to go for or do you feel more comfortable letting other people handle that side of it i um you know what, with the Spice Girls, I'm sure you know that we always kind of said what we wanted and what we didn't want, <laughs> what we really, really wanted. I'm allowed to make that joke. Um, and, you know, it's funny talking about Spice Girls videos because obviously that's when budgets were mahoosive and were probably quite disgusting, yeah. actually, in reality. But you were selling millions of records, so there was money sloshing about everywhere in the music industry. It was, it was a different time. Um, so now your things, you do have to be more creative because obviously budgets are a lot smaller. And I, I see myself, it's funny actually, because I'm not, visually, I'm not that confident in my creativity. I'm this, I don't want to sound, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but anyway, I don't want to sound like wanky, but I'm a really physical person. So like when it comes to like, writing songs, melodies, expressing emotions and things like that. That's kind of where my creativity flows. But when it comes to visuals, I always reach out to people who are much more advanced in that area. 
And you were just saying as well, like obviously the budgets and all the rest of it were huge back then, but I think the role of a music video has kind of shifted and changed since then as well. Like, you know, the whole thing is, is a different, it's a different approach to the whole thing now. Everything has changed. And, you know, there's, there's good and bad in everything, but I'm so excited. I'm probably more excited now about making music than I have been in a really long time because I just think as a consumer, we have the world at our fingertips, you know, and it's hard being an artist, you know, financially, it's difficult, especially with our live scene being, you know, absolutely decimated by the pandemic. But I think being able to make music with technology is so much easier and quicker, getting it out there, you know, as a consumer, streaming platforms, you know, things like Amazon Music and YouTube and Vivo and being able to watch videos. Um, I think it just makes it exciting. It's so much quicker. It's so much easier. I think that, you know, there is a long way to go in allowing the artists to, to really be able to, to fund themselves financially because I don't, you know, I'm so lucky. I'm a Spice Girl. You know, I, I was around in a time where you sold millions of records. I've been able to set myself up. Um, I've been able to start my own label, but I look at young artists and I just think, man, you know, streaming revenues, it's tough, you know, it's tough to keep going. So I, I think there's a bit of work to be done there. I'm going to go on to fan questions in a moment because the chat is going crazy and I don't want to hog all of this time to myself. The last thing I'll ask on that point was because you said it's harder these days for younger artists to make it, do you see yourself almost in a position where you're like, I'm going to help this younger artist. I'm going to show them the ropes. I'm going to introduce them to the right people. I'm going to put them on the right path. Is that something, is that something you feel like you've been able to do? I do that as much as I can. You know, I think it's really hard because everyone is on their own path, but I do find myself really, <laughs> I kind of, without even thinking about it, I suppose, you know, I'm a mum as well, so I feel quite maternal. I feel like I have a responsibility to young artists because, you know, because I've been there and there are pitfalls and I've fallen into some of them. So I always, I do, I want to help people. I want to advise people, um, not only with their career, but, you know, with personal things that can arise through this whole crazy scenario you can find yourself in. All right, let's get on to the fan questions. The first one comes from Dirty Carrot. Excellent username. I hope these just keep getting better. Uh, they've said, hey Mel, if you, could, if you had to wear another Spice Girls wardrobe from back in the heyday, whose would you choose? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? That is such, do you know what, Dirty Carrot, I've got to say to you, never had that question, and trust me, I've had many questions. Um, there we my, go. My mind immediately, An original Spice Girls question. Yeah, it's brilliant, I know, who knew? Um, now, I want to say Victoria, <laughs> But, but then I, I, I'm kind of drawn to Mel B. I think if I had Mel B's body, I'd say Mel B. Um, I mean, she, when we did the tour last year, her costumes were off the scale. Um, yeah, I mean, she can wear anything. But yeah, maybe Victoria's back in the day. She was more demure, wasn't she? But it just didn't suit me. I think I, I dressed up as Victoria in the movie and I looked ridiculous. So I think I'd just have to stick with Sporty. <laughs> I think I'd look pretty good in leopard print. Um, Studeen, Studeen, Stud, they've said, Hey Jack, can you ask Melanie, does she consider the song, this is a very interesting in-depth question actually, they've said, does Melanie consider the song good enough to be a conversation between two people? To me, it definitely feels like a conversation. If so, was there ever consideration for the song to be a duet? Thanks from Stu. Ooh, that's interesting. I, do you know what? I haven't thought about it in that way. Um, that I collaborated with Shura on this album, uh, this song, Shura and Future Cut, um, we, we wrote this together. And I think Shura's style of writing is very conversational. And I love that. Um, I love that it, with an artist, when it feels like a stream of consciousness. Um, but I want to go back and listen to it now and, and see, see what you mean. But it's like, you keep on calling, but I don't want to pick up. It's, <laughs> it's definitely, it's me thinking about not having a conversation with somebody, <laughs> avoiding it. <laughs> uh, Avin, Avin Isms says, I'm never going to get used to these usernames. 
said, would you ever release an anthology type of compilation? <laughs> Imagine your greatest hits, hits plus unreleased music, demos, B-sides, remix, remixes, etc. That would be amazing. Yeah, I, th this is funny because I often get asked questions about like releasing B-sides or unreleased tracks, especially Spice Girls, we get asked that all the time. And my, my answer always is, there's a reason why a song's a B-side and there's a reason why songs don't get released. That's because they're not good enough. Um, so I've always felt a little bit weird about that. But I do understand that fans are so, you know, they just love to have something new and something different and they'd love to collect. But I think also it's it's different now, isn't it? Because you can make your own playlists and stuff. So I, I, don't, I don't know how co compilations survive because you can just make your own, can't you? Yeah, like, can't you just decide what you think the greatest hits are and just do that? You, like, <laughs> suppose you're just like, oh, I'll, I'll make it if you're going to buy it. I you know. Just do but, it yourself. <laughs> but we shouldn't say that because they still get released. Do you know what I mean? It's like, we, you know, these greatest hits get released all the time. So it's, yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's, it feels like, I don't know, something of a, of a bygone era. <laughs> I love that you're, you're like, I'll put together my own Amazon Music playlist and just give you that. You just, you know, I, don't, I don't need to actually make an album for it. Uh, Mr. Chris Thomas has said, uh, Hi, Melanie. I absolutely loved seeing you in Blood Brothers and would love to see you in another musical. If you could star in another musical, what would it be from Chris Thomas in Stockport? Ooh, hi, Chris Thomas in Stockport. How is it up there? All, all my northern clan are getting sick. Um, but big love to everyone in the north. I miss you all very much. Um, uh, what well, I've forgotten the question now. What was the question again? Oh, Blood Brothers musicals. Yes. They, um, they... If yeah, yeah, I've, I remembered it in the end. Sorry, when I've pieced. Um, I, you know what? I'd love to work on Broadway. I've kind of, I've been so lucky in my career. I've done so many amazing things. And I love working in the West End, doing Blood Brothers. And then I loved performing in Liverpool, getting to do it in the city where it was, you know, written about and written in. And I've done Jesus Christ Superstar as an arena tour. And so that was kind of like my two loves, musical theatre and, you know, music in an arena setting, just kind of doing a rock and roll tour was really um, amazing. But yeah, I'd love to do Broadway. And I think Chicago is kind of one of the classics, which would be really great to do. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always open to ideas. And I think there are so many great new musicals that like ha were coming on the scene until, you know, all this shit happened. Um, so yeah, I'm always, I'm always open to suggestions on that one. Is there a particular character in Chicago that, that is drawing your, your eye? Well, Roxy's the big one, isn't she? She's the uh, the one that so many great people have played. So uh, yeah, maybe that, maybe to get me a fishnet stockings out. <laughs> no one wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Relaxing Wave 13 says, Melanie, I've been following your solo career since Northern Star and you've been growing as a solo artist with each album, but I feel you've exceptionally evolved personally and professionally with your latest album. These are so nice uh, with uh, your latest album. How does it feel to finally accept all aspects of yourself? Wow. Okay. Big question. <laughs> um, it's a blooming relief, my friend. Let me tell you. Um, I, you know what, I look at my little girl, she's 11, and I just think about the journey that you take, you know, like through your teens <laughs> and your 20s. And you just like, I think as a mum, you just want to shield them from any pain because, you know, there's loads of heartbreak to come. And, um, you know, first times with lots of things and it's, oh. But, you know, that's life, isn't it? You, it, it takes you a long time to kind of, I suppose it's all about the journey, isn't it? Not the destination. So, um, yeah, it, it's a relief that it's, there's lots of really rubbish things about getting old. Um, but there's, the good things are you kind of care less about what people think. So, uh, I'm, I'm holding on to the good stuff. Little Pinky Lou. <laughs> That one just stick with me. Uh, I said, 
for 25 years. <laughs> You've been making music for 25 years now. How do you keep your tunes sounding so fresh when you tour? Especially even just now, actually, to the, the one that you just did on yeah. uh, on the Amazon Music sessions, like you did such a, a sort of a shift for a bunch of those songs, played them very differently. Yeah. Um, hi, Lou. I know little Pinky Lou. Um, yeah. Uh, do you know what? It's just really loving music and always. You know, I love pop music. I, I love chart music i listen to it all day long you know i'm not gonna I, I like so many genres of music but i think kind of listening to to what's happening and the influences that are happening all the time inspires me and i work with incredible musicians my md um, ricky ricardi who you saw there my one-man band at times um who was also the md for the spice girls last year as well so an exceptionally talented man and yeah, and we, we just we just chat about what we love, what we've heard, what we think would work. And it, yeah, it's just really fun. It's a really fun collaborative process again. Um, yeah, I think, do you know what's lovely actually? This makes me think about the young artists that I love and, and so often talk about the Spice Girls inspiring them as kids. And I love it because I'm so inspired by these artists, whether it be someone like Dua Lipa or Billie Eilish or Charlie XCX or Murr. Um, so it's like this cycle of being inspired. It's It must be insane. I mean, do you ever, you must assume that they know about Spice Girls. I, I don't imagine you ever approach a new artist and say, and just assume that they, they've been inspired by your work. But I assume it doesn't come as a surprise anymore when somebody says, oh, yeah, I, the reason why I got into all of this was because of the Spice Girls. Do you know what? I think it's very much of this time. You know what I mean? It's like, because it's like 25 years ago, everybody's like, the, the artists that are, you know, the, the big artists of the day were growing up through that time. And, and I think obviously the Spice Girls were so huge that it was difficult to not be aware of them. Um, so yeah, I think at first, especially like an artist like Charlie XCX, I was like, she's so cool. She's so in her own lane. And to hear her talk about it, I was like, oh, wow. And then it just kind of started happening more and more. And I was like, oh, I get it now. It's like, you know, they were just bombarded with it, you know, in the 90s. You couldn't, you couldn't turn on the telly, could you, without hearing something about Spice Girls? Mind you, it's still, it's still a bit like that now, isn't it? Can't get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's asked a very interesting question. The other Nick said, is it daunting to approach another artist about collaborating? Are there any artists on your wish list of collaborations? That's really funny. I thought you were going to say, are there any artists that have said no? <laughs> now I was thinking, I bet there is. Oh. <laughs> that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Yeah, do you want to do a collab now? No, I um, don't want to work with you. I, my <laughs> Not a fan. Is, yeah, no, thanks. No, you're all right. You're all right, cheers. Um, for me, I have been dead lucky again because at Brown Adams, amazing tune amazing artist to kind of set me on my little road as a solo artist Lisa like absolutely adore her and was a massive TF I still am a massive TLC fan um, and the opportunity to work with her it just kind of happened quite accidentally and then with Nadia I mean our story is so cool we um I watched her on I saw her on a documentary about women and I just fell in love with her. Started watching all her amazing videos online and I just, I mean, she's, you saw tonight, she's just amazing. And uh, fell in love with her and then happened to bump into her at a fashion week party, after show party where I was DJing. And I was like, this is so weird. Um, it's a sign, it's a sign, we've got to work together. And approached her and yeah, luckily she was up for it again, of course, of the Spice Girls generation. So I think, yeah, moving forward, I do like it when it feels like it happens quite organically. But I think the music I'm making right now, I'm kind of drawn towards working with some DJs. You know, there are so many great, like, songwriter, producer DJs out there, whether it's like Jax Jones, Calvin Harris, Diplo. I mean, obviously, you know, they're the, the top boys out there. But I think that's definitely somewhere I'd like to, to have a little, little go at. We've got time for a couple more questions. I'm going to try and get in the best ones possible. But if you want to try and get in a, another great question to the chat for the final question, be my guest. Uh, Amelia Harris has said, 
Is there any show from all the ones that you've done that you'd want to relive? If so, which one and why? Oh, these questions are so good, aren't they? They know what they're so, doing. They're doing a good job. Yeah, they do. They do. They, you, you know what? They, they give journalists a run for their money. They, they don't even give them a run for their money. They're just like <laughs> peeing all over them, to be fair. Um, <laughs> so we live. I want to go back to Wembley Stadium last night of the Spice Girls Tour 2019. I want to do that again. I want to go back to my 40th, 40s 40, Shepherd's Bush Empire. I had loads of guests come and join me. Emma Bunton, Nat from All Saints. Um, Chris Moyles came up and sang with me. And then forced my mate, um, James Walsh from Star Sailor. It was an amazing night. Um, yeah, I'd love to go back to that night. Oh my God, there's so, so many. I'd like to go back to like my first festival as a solo artist, which was V99. And it was hardcore. Um, I'd love to go back with all the, the wisdom and um, bravado. I suppose I had bravado then, but I feel a bit more confident now. Um, I'd love to do that again. There's, I did a gig. I did two amazing nights. I'm, I'll, I'll be here all night telling you this. I'm just reliving all my live experiences now because I miss them so much. I played two gigs. Go ahead. One in Northern Ireland. And the next night I was in, um, in Dublin. I was in Belfast. I played the limelight. If anyone knows it, it's an amazing gig. It's a little pub. The stage is a tiny little stage in the corner. They've had loads of bands play there, um, like loads of bands play there before they like go huge. I think Oasis played there back in the day. And we had such a great gig. It's so vibey, but tiny. And then the next night we played the Olympia in Dublin, which is massive. It's like a, a theatre, it's a big old theatre and the stage is really big. And I just remember like like doing like sprints of the stage from side to side because it was so lovely to have that space. And the wonderful thing about that is doing that like two nights in a row is just, you know, as an artist, the opportunities you get to play such different environments and that you, I couldn't say which one I prefer. They're both amazing. So they, they really stick out in my head as well. Final question from Charles Burroughs, 96. Now that the album has been out for a while, has your favorite song changed at all or is it the same as it was before the release? Absolutely adore Melanie C. <laughs> Ah, hi, um, Charlotte. I know her too. I, I know a lot of these people. Um, do you know what? This album for me, and you know, people who have, have watched lots of the interviews I've done will have heard me say this. It's like, I don't skip any songs on this album. And I know as an artist, you probably shouldn't say there are, there are some songs of your own you do skip. But I do. No, I'm honest. Um, but this album, I love every single song and, you know, songs mean different things to me. Who I Am obviously was the first single and just really is the introduction to the album. Just thematically, it's what it's all about. Something like Blame It On Me is really fun. In and Out Of Love, I love doing it so like upbeat and fun lyrically as well as musically. Nowhere to Run is, you know, about a subject matter I've never explored before. And that's, you know, I love getting dark. That's a darker moment on the album. And then End of Everything is kind of me, my old, you know, last song usual, getting all emotional and dramatic on your ass. Um, and that was like kind of more of a traditional songwriting experience. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, I can't pick a favourite because I, I love them all and I think, um, actually, because this is the last question, I've, I've really got to go because I'm going to do some workouts with Joe Wicks for Children in Need. But I feel quite emotional because <laughs> um, I, I just I just feel like, you know, when you do things like this and people have tuned in and they've taken their time, they've come up with these amazing questions, they've supported me for all these years. They have literally, you know, gave given me these opportunities and I'm so grateful. And I just think we're having such a shit year and you know and i'm feeling it like i know you all are and i just want to say thank you for everything to this point and i just really look forward to what's beyond this because i tell you something if there's not better things to come i don't know what i'm going to do <laughs> what a wonderful note to end it on melanie c thank you so much for joining us on the amazon music sessions it's been a pleasure to talk to you uh yeah i just want to say thank you what an amazing time we've all had here. I'm sure everyone in the chat agrees.
Oh, thanks, Jack. You are amazing. And everyone's questions were brilliant. And yeah, lots of love to everyone. I know there's people tuning in all over the world. So my big love to you all. I hope to see you all soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Nadia Rose and of course to Melanie C. That's our show, everybody. We'll be here next week, same time, same place, from 6 p.m. on the Amazon Music UK Twitch channel. So if you haven't followed us, please follow us. Uh, and next week we'll have Gurley and Young's Teflon. So that's going to be fun. But until then, my name is Jack Howard. Get the hell out of my room. Bye. <laughs>